I appreciate the things that I've experienced in life, the good and the bad. And I've learned how to take challenges and, and, and things that seem like I, I won't work. I learned how to make them work. Turn them around and let it work out for my good. I've learned how to do yes. that. I, I'm, 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 I, was, I was telling uh, the students and the parents, somebody cut me down, somebody cut me down. And I was telling the students and the parents that, right there, that I cannot, under no circumstances, uh, I didn't realize that my life would be exactly where I am today. And I was telling them that I was brought up with a one-parent home. I knew who my father was. I know exactly who he, he was till the day he died. He was in and out of our lives. But that didn't stop my mother and the one that reared us for the, just about the majority of our lives all by herself. And we never wanted for anything. That we always wanted things. Hello. Amen. Amen. We wanted Chuck Taylors. Yeah. <laughs> that was in our day. Yeah. We had those blue tips. Yeah. Somebody don't be in this place. Right. That was the closest thing that we could get to Chuck Taylor. I, 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 I might be out to eat myself, but you know. Y'all help me somebody. <laughs> We didn't get everything necessary that we wanted, but we didn't want for anything. The never was a day that we didn't have food in the house. My mother was a single parent. Never was a day that my mother bring our uncle home. Y'all help me. Amen. Amen. Some man that was our uncle that was never kid to us. You know how it is. Never did that happen. Brought us up, and I told those kids that I remember my sixth grade commencement. I remember. I, I just, if I don't remember nothing else, I probably go to my grave remembering this. And I walked across the stage and got my diploma from sixth grade. I remember it. I can vividly see it in my, in, in my imagination, in my mind. I can see it happen to me. I can see myself walk across the stage. I remember sitting there and hearing the commencement speaker uh, tell us and tell, tell the youth and tell those that were there, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. I remember that. That stick with me. Maybe I'm getting older and see now. Don't ask me what happened yesterday, but I, I, I will tell you what happened back then in the sixth grade. And I was at a funeral yesterday. I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm getting ready to go home. Maybe I'm getting prepared, because I'm starting remembering things that, 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 that my life is just coming to fruition. It's coming in a direction that whatever you go through in life, whatever you're doing in life, somebody's going to watch you. <laughs> At the funeral, I was telling them about the two uh, men that lived on each side of us. Eldria was on one side, Mr. Smith was on the other side. And how, as a young man, I was able to watch both of these men and what they did in life. How, I didn't realize it until yesterday, these men were really following me. They were not my biological father, but they were the father figures that I was looking at. And I, it just hit me like a ton of bricks yesterday. That the funeral that I was at, that Mr. Smith, he, he clearly, he was a sharp dresser. This guy was sharp. Amen. He was humorous. Somebody help me here. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Had bad cars. Somebody help me here. Uh-huh. And he kept his log looking good. Amen. Good work ethic. Amen. Yeah, and I looked at myself and said, wow, I, I like to work. I, I work myself to death. 
I like to keep my lawn looking good. I look good, but I like it looking good. Somebody else. <coughs> Come on, somebody. And I definitely like to dress. I like to dress. And, and, and I, I, I don't think I got that from Mrs. Still. I got that from First Lady. She makes me dress. <laughs> Told him, I want you 
want you to get out of your kid prison. Get out, leave your father's house and go to some place that I'm going to show you. Here, I, I, I went back and I, I started doing a little digging. And I, 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 I pulled something out of the records. History, uh, it, it tells us about the, a particular individual named Howard Thurman. And Mr. Thurman, he was an influential African American. And he was an author, a philosopher, a theologian, he was an educator, a civil rights leader. And this individual um, graduated from Morehouse University. And Mr. Thurman had two particular uh, critical questions. Uh, and bear with me just for a moment. And the question was, he asked, uh, and, and he wanted to really to get an answer for is, where am I going? Tell your neighbors and neighbor. Yeah. Uh, I guess you can't tell you. Tell yourself this. Don't tell, <laughs> your, neighbor, don't tell your neighbors. Hey, hey, important. Tell yourself, say, sir, where am I going? And who's going with me? Come on, tell yourself again. Tell you, go on and talk to yourself until you turn crazy. Sir, where am I going? And who's going with me? Sometimes you have to ask yourself that. Because sometimes life seems like you're just going in a circle. Things happen in your life, you get it straight, then all of a sudden you're facing that thing again. Do I get a witness in here? Amen. Anybody ever had a situation that was ugly, you overcame it, then all of a sudden it's right back at you again? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, all right. I got at least one in here. Well, first let me, let me just do this. You, you got to identify your goals in life. You have to take the time as individuals and identify the goals in life. Now, I, 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 all four of my children are grown. And, and I ain't gonna tell you who, so I, cause y'all start picking on me and I might get mad, upset. But one of my children, one of my children said, they gonna be a fire truck. Goals and to help you, counselors 
in school. Uh, they try their best to help the students to, to formulate some kind of idea of direction so that when they're in school, uh, they can begin to start taking classes that's going to take them in the direction that they want to travel. Uh, I, we, we, we had fun coming back up the road. I, I was reminiscing with my, my niece, and I, I didn't know she was as smart as she is. I just want to say that. And I, sometimes you got to compliment people to help them realize that you understand, hey amen, you got a good head on your shoulder. <coughs> Somebody else may think you ain't nobody, but don't let nobody tell you you ain't nobody. Every right. time you ride up down the road with the bishop, you were somebody. Come on, come on. <laughs> you may not appreciate it, but somebody else said, hey, everybody gets hit right down here. Somebody else said something. Hey, everybody get right down here. Come. Amen. 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 Everybody got to ride. Amen. You got some people who want to ride in and walk all over the seat. They ain't riding. Uh -huh. Maybe we ran the kid. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but, but you need to identify your destiny. You need to identify. So help somebody, when somebody help you identify your destiny, you need to begin to start aiming for that goal. Mm -hmm. And as you aim for that goal, you need to set out to make it happen. Okay? Sometimes to make your goal take place and you going forward, you're going to end up having to go backwards. You know the, 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 the dynamics of pulling the bow and the arrow, pulling the string. You can't go forward unless you go backwards. When you go backwards, don't get all upset and get mad. You get setbacks in life. Anybody ever had setbacks? Uh, and, 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 and when setbacks really made you upset, somebody say something to me. Well, setbacks, are, you know, is something that's going to help propel you for combat. It's going to propel you forward. What the enemy try to do is try to get you to stop, stop pursuing your goal. Now, I, I, can, I can take a few minutes and I can ask you again to look at yourself. And you can look at yourself and you can look at who you hang with. Mm, oh, I'm talking now. Uh -huh. <laughs> Some of us have hooked up <laughs> with a couple of rejects that caused us to be disconnected from making our goal. Somebody else, anybody can't drive. Man, don't care if 
it's your trunk. Listen here. When, when you drive somebody else's dumb trunk after a while, you will, you will find yourself buying yourself a dumb trunk. Come on, somebody. Somebody said, well, what can I do with a dumb trunk? You put dirt in it. And that's all you got in your life is dirt? Come on, put it in the trunk. Ah, God. I'm going to I'm just convinced that if we take the time Take a few minutes and check who we hang with. We, we can determine, amen, if somebody got us uh, hooked up, we hooked up with the wrong one. Well, uh, if you are connected in an improper relationship, sometimes we get in improper relationship. Uh, I, I, I know I, I'm not going to go against the, 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 the gay marriage and all. I'm not, I'm not talking about that today. Because you got some straight marriages that's improper. Amen. 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 I just moved my head. Right? Yeah. <laughs> fast ball. I don't care about me so fast. <laughs> yeah, they're right. They're straight. They're, they're straight married. They're straight. There's there's nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. Amen. Both of them are equally yoked. Somebody help me. Yeah. I ain't talking about the world. I'm talking about the same sanctified ones that got the Holy Ghost. That's baptized in Jesus' name. That come to Bible. That's living for God. Somebody help me here. Their, their marriage is on the rocks. Oh, I'm preaching there. I'm Amen. Amen. So, so you can't you can't say you know that because you know somebody's messed up that they can is improper. Come on, listen. What the devil wants you to do is he is all he wants you to do is throw the towel in. You give them one your marriage that easy. Mm. Check with it. Were to take a poll and get everybody that has been divorced and sit on one side and talk to a single person, wow. I promise you, you'll get a consensus from the audience that that the, the ones that got divorced and remarried, fifty percent of those that remarried get divorced again. Wow. So it's not in the first marriage, or the second marriage, or the third marriage. It's in the person of yourself. Amen. Somebody help me in this place. Oh, I'm preaching now. I'm talking. I'm teaching. I'm, I'm doing something real good here. Come on. But but if I'm in something improper, I just say forget it and I move on. And later on, I hook up again. You will find out the problem ain't somebody else. The problem is you. Thank you. Why should I try to blame my failures all the time on somebody else? Thank you. There you go. Society has gotten us to the place where we think everything is okay. Well, I'll tell you, I, 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 was, I was listening to the news and they, they were saying something about a 13 or 14 or 15 year old boy that lured a 19 year old drug dealer into the park and they stabbed him to death. Killed the 19 year old. And, and, and the 14 and the 15 year old, they, they're going to charge them as adults. And they don't, they, they protect the innocent of the 13 year old that's just as guilty as the 14 and 15 year old. Wow. Somebody say something to me. <laughs> Secondly, they, they got all these crazy things that they put out on YouTube. Young people, look at me. Look at me for a minute. Look one minute. If you ever want to ruin your life for life, for the rest of your life, put something stupid out on YouTube. Amen. 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 I've never seen such foolishness in life. Kids whooping up on somebody and thinking that's funny, right. and then YouTube it and put it out there. And then against the hits. Everybody they see on the camera, somebody going to jail. Amen. You know it. All kind of crazy. I deem it crazy, maybe because I'm 60. But I, I don't see nothing funny about it. It's not. Beating up somebody on a bus. And, and all those adults, I dare be on the bus if somebody woke somebody up. You will see me on the YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody help me here. You will see a young lady on the bus getting whooped up and you a man, a husky man. You won't mess that up. I will break somebody's neck. I ain't going to think about it. I'm the bishop. I'm saved, sanctified. Yes. We gotta teach our children. Listen here, you, it, it looks cute. It looks fun. 
not do anything wrong. He just hooked up with the people in Sodom. He just hooked up with them in a manner in risen where he wasn't part of them, but he was close enough Such to age. be in charge of them. That's right. I want you to tell, I want you to know that when when the angels came to Abraham to go to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, when they got to Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot was sitting in the gate. And if you're the gatekeeper, it's like being the mayor of the city. You allow what's coming in and out of the gate. I wish I had somebody here to know what I'm talking about. And now all the younger ones 
uh, that, that I deem, they not young, they don't hurt. You're not, you're not young no more. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Jesus. 